Hey good people, Batavia here. We're going to tour the front yard garden and the backyard garden. We have plenty of food growing in both places, so let's go ahead and dig in. Okie doke, so we were together in this space about a month ago. This is my front yard garden. I'm in the U.S. I garden in Chicago, Illinois. So I'm in the midst of a big city, but there's so many opportunities to grow some great food. Quick note on sunflowers, which have been doing really, really well. I have covered them with some leftover tulle fabric, and the goal there is to protect some of them from the birds, some of them from the squirrels, and while letting some others be enjoyed as they should be by those creatures. We're gonna give this chard a huge haircut and then we're going to look for the new growth as the cooler weather sets in. Look at all of this celery that we really should be harvesting. Um, we're gonna be freezing a bunch of it. Uh, we'll be able to store some of it in our refrigerator. Well, let's look at some peppers that are kicking butt. Our mystery pepper plant has really gotten some height. I mean, I'm not sure if I've ever had a pepper plant get this tall. That's probably about three feet tall. If I had to guess, I'm terrible at guessing these things. White bell pepper, and it's just much more flavorful when it turns this goldish color. One of my favorite ways for bell peppers is to simply roast them, either on a grill or in the oven. I mean, I don't know if there's a more delicious way to enjoy a bell pepper. We have a bunch of different varieties. At this point, I'm nervous to even name them because they're just not looking like what I thought I planted. But for my purpose, none of that really matters. I mean, I want to know for future reference, but when it comes to what I have plans for enjoying these peppers, I'm all in for whatever these are. <laughs> my Cherokee Purple, which is one of a few tomato plants left in the garden. Really productive. Did much better this year than it did last year, which was my first year growing it. It definitely is more prone to cracking than some of the other tomatoes I've grown. And then it's already been uh, sacrificed to the squirrels, one tomato has. So we're keeping an eye and making sure that we can get to them. Um, so using different methods here. New flush of strawberries. This is the first year that I planted these strawberry plants. And we gotta get in here and clean up. Uh, and then we're going to, I've said this before, but haven't gotten to it. We're gonna cover this bed so we can enjoy the strawberries. Of our round 36 inch bed that has sweet potatoes here that will be harvested later this season. And then we have our bean tower. So these are two sets of trellises and it's been a really good bean year for me. But more importantly, one of the things I try to figure out when I'm growing various crops is how much of a crop do I need to plant to get the yield that I'm looking for. And it's been a hard road. Um, I've, there are a couple of books out there that says for a family of X, you should plant X, but that map just hasn't quite worked out for me. So I'm very happy to report this year, I can go back and look at the number of beans that I started out with. And I now know that, you know, this kind of planting yielded so far about 12 pints of beans I was able to preserve. And then I have a bunch that I ate fresh. It definitely gives me a starting point to know how to make adjustments as I go into future years. So that's super important to me, not just for beans, but for all of the crops that I grow that I wanna to continue to eat even during the off season. Did we, did we skip over the tomato plant? The, the prize of the garden, the prize of tomatoes this year? So our boxcar Willie has come through. It is everything that I remember it being last year. And as of this morning, we have the first blushing tomato. We have to protect this tomato plant at all costs. <laughs> if you guys, uh, if you spent some time with me a few weeks ago when I talked about sick tomato plants in the backyard garden, you'll know why. But this is where joy is restored when it comes to tomatoes. A single plant has done that for me. <laughs> and so look at what's developed since we were last together, yep melons. This is the mango melon based on what I planted over here and fingers and toes crossed say a garden prayer for me. I am just really hoping that these melons get to the point of ripening. While the front yard is absolutely kind of the new and shiny thing in my garden world, 
this is the space where I learn to become a gardener, right? And I am always enamored by what I'm able to produce out of this space, how I'm able to change it over the years. And it just, it's one of the first things I look at each day. It brings me the greatest joy. We'll do something separate on containers. I wanna be conscious of the time that I have with y'all. And so we'll have a video focused specifically on that and how they're doing at this point in the season. For now, I wanna look at some of these raised beds. This was newly planted after we harvested the uh, garlic. So this is probably about seven weeks of growth. Turnips, we're coming in and harvesting. We're coming for you. I'm so happy because our spring turnips did not do well. So we're gonna come in and get these larger turnips um, and we're gonna harvest the leaves. We'll cook up both. We'll get a good look at what's growing as far as this middle row which are a bunch of turnips as well. Then we'll be harvesting this lettuce as well because it's starting to bolt. I think the green lettuce is okay for now, but the red, we wanna make sure we get out and we're able to enjoy. We have a couple other things, match that we've planted. I'm waiting for some spinach that I dropped seeds for to come up. And then we still have some basil in this space. One of the things that, if nothing else gets done in the garden today, it's gonna be me harvesting carrots. My years of growing carrots have been hit or miss, but this year has been a good year. Yeah, I'm just, uh, it's caught up in the leaves, but I continue to be impressed by what this bed that's basically sitting on the concrete will do. Some of my best crops have come from these two beds, this one and this one here. Okay, Doc, so we are on a whole new day. I look back at the video from yesterday and it just, I couldn't tell what was what. I ended up coming in, my garden chores included, clearing out the bottom leaves, anything that was discolored that looked like it was something I didn't want to eat, I picked off. And then I also wanted to stake these plants because they're getting top heavy and toppling over. And then lastly, I came in, things are wet because I wanted to take a hard spray with the hose to try to rid these plants of some of the aphids. So I know there are a bunch of different things you can do. I typically don't use sprays and things in my garden. Um, so I try to keep things basic and so far so good. Um, so now things are kind of in a space where you can see what's what and who's who. So my kale here, prism kale, my Brussels sprouts, which there's a whole sorted story there. There's a video where we talk about this and the collards. Those three were transplants that I purchased. What ended up happening as I was working in the bed, this one plant basically toppled over uh, and it ended up splitting. And so I was tempted to just cut the entire plant out, but then I thought it's toppling over because of these large leaves. Harvest the leaves and you can get those greens cooked up. It wasn't on the list for today, but that's okay. And then you can basically try to stake the plant and so if it heals itself you still have new production in here um, so quick note a lot of people like smaller leaves smaller collards these are definitely more tender than something that's a lot larger like this now i've never had tough greens out of my garden I've never had bitter greens, but I have heard that that's what can happen if the leaves get too large. Um, so I, I probably would say bigger isn't always better. Every year I intend on harvesting leaves when they're younger. Every year I end up here. So we're gonna continue to roll with it. All right, so Brussels sprouts. Sprouts have produced, and I'm going to take everyone at their word that these will get sweeter. Once the frost hits them, I'll likely end up harvesting these once they get a little bit more size on them. Um, and so we still have plenty that are growing up the stalk. So next up is the cage baby, what's growing in the raised beds in there. And then we're gonna finish up in the front yard garden where we have a couple more things to cover off on. Oh no, I was waiting on you. Let's see, let's hope you're intact. Oh, thank goodness. So few pineapple tomatoes from this year. We have sweet potatoes that are on the bottom and then on top we have our maidie and cucumbers. I really like the growth of the plant. I'm not so sure about the taste. 
I am trying to attribute it to me not getting to the plants and harvesting at the optimal size. <laughs> I mean, at some point, this almost feels like neglect. But I'm gonna cut it open and see how good it may taste. I was expecting something with a hint of fruitiness. Didn't get that. Um, it's not as refreshing as a cucumber. You know, so I'm hoping that again, it's just the size that I was harvesting it at. But I'm thinking maybe trying to pickle it. I think that this is probably, you know, maybe a good candidate for some relish. So I've not given up on it yet, um, but I'm not saying it's a winner winner yet. Bell peppers here, poblanos, enough for chili rellanos, which is gonna be a treat. Shout out to my buddy Ben. I took his idea, he's on Backyard Gardens TV, and he and I also do a garden podcast, two episodes a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. He has this bench in his garden, so it's for containers, and I love the idea. Now I have a little bit of space in the cage, baby, I thought, let's try this. This is my version of dry fitting. See how I feel about it. Ground cherries, so the plant has been tattered, but it's still producing. I don't have enough and, you know, planted, and enough isn't producing for like jams and things, but it definitely is enough to have garden snacks, which is a real treat when you're working in the garden. This is the last of the pineapple tomato, um, and, you know, well, some of y'all know that story. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna move on to brighter days. Um, jalapenos. This plant is flush. It has so many flowers. It's produced so many fruit. At this point, this is when some of my pepper plants thrive. So I'm going with it. Another jalapeno pepper plant there. So giant Marconi. Uh, I finally got this plant to perform in a way um, that I thought it could. So pepper is ripening to red. We also have carrots here. I'm making carrot top pesto from the carrot tops that I have in the other raised bed. Um, these carrots are not quite ready to harvest yet, although I think the young carrot tops would be tasty as well. I've read you want to get the carrot tops before they get too mature. So banana peppers, we have plenty to harvest. I, as a theme, like to let my peppers get fully mature if I can. And so we'll harvest those red ones and the orange ones. We may take the, a couple of yellow just for you know, contrast in color. And so we have a mystery pepper, maybe the long Aldi pepper from the saved grocery store seeds, I'm not sure. Uh, this is the early scallop. I'm cutting away powdery mildew. Um, at this point, just harvesting flowers. That's what it's producing. <laughs> um, so we have yellow squash here, and then we have a zucchini plant that, this is another moment of being underwhelmed. I feel like I either get way too much zucchini or not enough. And so this year is one of those not enough. We have a honeycomb cherry. Okie doke, so we're back in the front yard garden. There's still a few things I wanna share with y'all that are growing. And I also wanna chat about what my plans are for these next few months as we get into a slower season in the garden. I really wanna look back over the last four years, which is a key point for me because it was four years ago that I dug up the front yard garden which essentially double the garden space that I have, right? And so that allowed me to, of course, expand. It allowed me to introduce new things that I'd never grown before to my garden space, try different garden techniques, planting styles, as well as playing around with that quantity we talked about with the beans, you know? So how many of a particular plant should I put into the garden to get the yield that I'm looking for, right? And so the great benefit is being able to have four years of sharing my garden with you all, connecting with you all, but also having an archive of sorts, right? You know, so I can look back over, you know, that first garden tour in 2019, you know, and I can look back year over year to see what really worked, you know, what was the timing when I planted a certain thing and, and how did that affect the harvest? So that is my plan. I wanted to share that with y'all. I'm hoping to take the best of everything forward into next year's garden season. And I'm hoping it puts me in a position to have a completely kick butt garden. And I'm hoping the same for y'all. Okay, so thanks for spending some time with me. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them below and I'll see you all on the next one.